Our gospel reading tonight is Luke 2, 1 through 20. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinus was governor of Syria, and all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Thanks be to God for the reading of his word. My hope is in you, Lord. Psalm 39, 7. So I was asked a few weeks ago to conduct our Christmas Eve service, and I thought, you don't want me. Haven't you heard about my year? Well, it's quite the country song, if you will. Hurt my back again then a tick bite and Lyme's disease, hurt my shoulder, then my neck, and do not forget my back again. I even ran over a dog. So don't ask me, I thought. And then I saw the title, Give Us Hope. And thought again, yeah, right. But then I also remembered I came up with the title. I also have a title to my country song, Don't Bet on 2021. Now, do not get excited. I know there's part of you hoping that I'm going to play and part of you hoping that I won't. I get it. I I get it. The guitar is just a prop, and I don't have all the lyrics yet. The inside joke is I will occasionally break out into song here in the pulpit. Country road, you know, you know. Hope is real. Without it, what are we doing here? Tonight is not only about the hope in Christ and celebration of his birth, but the newness that his birth represents. Nothing will ever be the same from this night, that night, almost 2,000 years ago. Tonight represents hope in all that can be new in him and through him. We are now together. For a moment in our world's history, just like the shepherds and wise men Mary and Joseph were many years ago. They lived before us, and we now live today, connected all by that fulfilling moment of our Lord Jesus Christ's birth. Yes, we have come to celebrate the birth of our Lord. We do not forget that this is not the only part, is not the only part of the larger story. The birth of Christ mattered because it had been prophesied throughout the Old Testament. The birth fulfills the word. Then Christ grows up, begins his ministry at the ripe old age of 33, and he sacrificed his life so that we may live eternally through him. That's the biggest gift of all time, during every Christmas season, the gift of salvation, hope, love, peace, and joy. But have you lost hope? Is there no love, no peace, no joy, or not enough? 
You cannot receive the gift of salvation if you do not have hope in him. Hope in the story and life and death of our Lord Jesus Christ. Sure, John. I hear you. But how do you find hope? In each other? In gifts? In giving? In helping? In working? How about dying? Recently, there was a story written by Darcy Main of ESPN.com. In it, she tells the story of Michael Graydon. He's a 40-year-old landscaper with a young family diagnosed with terminal cancer and a dream of playing in the World Series of Poker. So with the encouragement of a friend, he did what everyone does these days. He went to Twitter. He asked for help to raise the money for the $10,000 buy-in. He had the money in 30 minutes. Then a pro pay Pro poker player caught wind of it online and offered to pay for the buy-in and the flight and the hotel. And others offered meals and anything else he may have needed during the stay in Vegas. Off he went. Even though I busted out on day one, I still had so much support and love from everybody, Graydon stated after returning home to Alabama. It was an experience I'll never forget, that's for sure. It didn't end the way I'd hoped. It still feels like a dream. As you can tell, the guy has a positive outlook on things, and he has plenty of reasons not to. His daughter had been diagnosed with a possible fatal kidney disease some six years ago. The family had fought through the weight of a transplant and all the time and effort in caring for a young child with many challenges. She recovered and is doing well, and things seem to be normal again. And then his diagnosis, inoperable cancer on the brain stem a procedure was simply not possible. After going through everything, you wonder why you've got to go through something again, Graydon remembered. His wife just wanted to pray. Michael wanted to know. It's a slow-growing glioma. The bad part is it's on his brain stem, the part that controls blood pressure, his breathing, heart rate, and all of those things. Maine goes on to write, Graydon owns a landscaping business and it's only full-time employee. He kept as many clients as he could, but a month after treatment was over, he struggled with extreme fatigue and was unable to get out of bed some days. Still, he is grateful to have the time at home with his daughters and that his wife is able to work. He credits his deep-rooted faith for getting him through even the toughest of days. I've always been a firm believer, even with my daughter, that everything happens for a reason, he said. And just so knowing that all this isn't just null and void, there is a reason behind it all. And I may not get the answer on this side of eternity, but at some point I'll understand it all. I just take every day as a new day. While his prognosis is somewhat uncertain because of the unpredictable nature of tumor growth, Graydon says his doctors have told him there is hope if they are able to slow it down. His scans since undergoing treatment have been promising including his most recently one this month. Thank God. That doesn't do it. John, pro poker player, what are we talking about here? How about a baby? Okay. Woman gives birth to son just before husband dies at the same hospital. Lady writes on Facebook, Haley Park. She and her husband, JB, welcomed their second son. But earlier that week, her husband was admitted for complications from his cancer. They found out they only had a matter of days, not six months, which was his original prognosis. With our second son's due date three weeks away, my husband and I knew asking for an induction was the right thing to do, Park wrote. Without hesitation, the team of ICU doctors communicated with the head of high-risk labor and delivery doctors. They offered me an induction as soon as I was ready. The induction did not lead to a quick labor, however, and when JB began declining faster, doctors decided to perform a cesarean section on Park. It was either a C-section right at that moment or JB would not have the opportunity to meet our son. So, from the OR to the IC room, there were what felt like hundreds of doctors and nurses floating us through this process effortlessly, not one of them having a dry eye in the entire place. Some of them told me they'll never, they've never seen an act of selflessness like this. Some called my actions brave and heroic. I just call it love. 
I acted out of love. I put my trust in God that this was part of his plan and that I did what I had to do out of love to fulfill my husband's last wish. While delivering the baby three weeks early can come with complications, Park's son was born seven pounds, four ounces, and fully developed lungs. She said they didn't have names picked out until the moment she was induced. And that's when she knew his name would be JB. Welcome to the world, JB. Park wrote, your story is truly a miracle. Well, that's why we're here tonight. The miracle of Jesus Christ. My friends and family, we are all going to die. Whether it be cancer, COVID, murder, accident, heart attack, it is the one guarantee. You will cease to live in your body and this world. However, we can all have hope in him. God did not teach us to live in fear. Do not lose hope in this life, in each other, in your marriage, in your business, in your church, or even in God himself. Do not let fear overcome hope in him. As we celebrate the birth of Christ, let this be a new birth in you, a new beginning, new love for Christ, for your family, for your church, and for each other. Let this be your new life in him. What I'm asking for is hope. Hope that our best days are ahead of us and with Christ with us who dare be against us. Tomorrow, we celebrate the birth, the newness of life. Be grateful for this part of your journey, all the aches and pains of this worldly life that we must endure and at times enjoy. Take this opportunity to be thankful for not only his life and death, but your gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ. That is my hope for all of you. To trust in him, hope in him, his birth, his life, and especially his death and all that it offers us. This evening you are being offered the gift of eternal life. Take it and the love, the peace, joy, and hope that only our Lord Jesus Christ can offer. Let this night be the new birth of your journey home to our Lord Jesus Christ and all those that hope in him. Amen.